Blessed be the one holy and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. A very warm welcome to Grace Church on the Hill on this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome wherever you may be, the cottage or in town. Welcome to our Mass parishioners here today. Uh, I'm alone today. Uh, Micah is with his wife in Chicago visiting Micah's parents. So we wish them a very happy time that they've now been able to cross the border and be together. Today, with the Worldwide Church, we celebrate the Blessed Virgin Mary and her role in the drama of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of your incarnate Son. May we who have been redeemed by his blood share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the full, a, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might to receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of Christ. May I speak to you in the name of the God of endless love. August the 15th, a day in the calendar in which the vast majority of Christians worldwide the day they honor and celebrate Mary, the mother of Jesus. If you've ever been to Europe on summer holidays, August the 15th, everything just stops. Well, apart from Advent creche scenes, we don't think much about Jesus' mother, do we? And historically, Mary is much neglected in our tradition. Although in this diocese, we have a number of parishes dedicated to St. Mary the Virgin. Think about it. Is Mary just another saint? No, she is the preeminent saint, the crucial saint, without which we don't have a gospel story. She is the beloved mother of Jesus. And if you look at that magnificent West Window at Grace Church of the Saints, she's surrounded by the saints. There she is, center stage. This beautiful image over here, too. In the fullness of time, God called this Jewish teenager to play an indispensable role in the gospel drama. And she said, yes, I agree. 
Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. She cooperates in the divine scheme. Remember at the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel addresses her, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with you. With you. You're favored. You're the chosen one. Something to fear, don't you think? As much as to be embraced. You. Blessed are you among all women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Well, as the one who agrees to birth Israel's Messiah, she sings the Magnificat. All generations will call me blessed. And isn't that true for the last 20 centuries? the Blessed Virgin Mary. Since the earliest days of the church, the figure of Mary has had a special place in the faith and practice of Christianity. Mary is the model for all those who hear God's call and respond. She's the archetype of the true disciple. Early on, Christian theologians began treating her as someone who deserved honor. You know, when we honor someone, we like to tell stories about them, right? We like to talk about them. In Mary's case, Luke and the rest of the New Testament offers less than we would like. And yet what she lacks in quantity of scriptural reference, she makes up in quality. For not only does Mary birth the Messiah, she's present at Jesus' first miracle at Cana of Galilee. She is present at the foot of the cross when all the male disciples run away. And she is present in the upper room at Pentecost, the only woman named in that room as they await the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. Mary is much on stage, and yet she remains something of a mystery. Mary is a figure about whom we know a great deal, and at the same time, really very little. She's a young first century Jewish woman who raises her son as an observant Jew. We forget that. She is an entirely human figure, a bit like us. Well, after her death, or as the Orthodox of the Greek East say, her dormition, her dormition, popular piety began to hail Mary as Theotokos, Theotokos, a Greek word which means God-bearer, bearer of God. The Council of Ephesus in 431, they sanctioned this title of honor. A tapestry of pious legends and folk tales, of course, have followed Mary down through the centuries, and she became rather idealized, superhuman, larger than life. And by the late Middle Ages, popular devotion to Mary had increased to the point of, in many cases, Mary Alla Tree, which means the worship of Mary. Well, among the saints, as you see here, Mary is given special honor. But the faithful were never, never, never to give worship, which belongs to God alone. But that distinction became increasingly blurred during the Middle Ages and hence the violent reaction of the 16th century Protestant Reformation. Well, I said historically that Mary was neglected in our English tradition. Let me give you an example. Handel's Messiah. We all love to hear Handel's Messiah at Christmas. It's a wonderful musical meditation on the birth 
the death and the resurrection of Jesus, right? Well, the London-based composer, George Frederick Handel, who was a good German Lutheran, hardly spoke any English, set a libretto by the English clergyman Charles Jennings, which is so constructed as to virtually ignore Mary, who might be considered to have a rather major role in the nativity story. She's not mentioned. And this is but one example of deliberate neglect. Why is this? Where does this come from? Well, the eminent Oxford historian Dermot McCulloch argues that there has been a long tendency to erase women from the record among English Protestants and Catholics alike. He writes, Protestantism's greatest subtraction of the feminine from Christianity was perpetrated on the person of Mary. As I noted, throughout the medieval period, the cult of the Madonna became marked by exaggerated devotions, and Mary's popularity prompted a destructive reaction in the Reformation period. Brash reformers like ex-monk Martin Luther, however, tried to find a devotional role to retain Mary in the story. However, the studied hostility of John Calvin in Geneva ensured that Mary was virtually scrubbed out of the script, even though one might regard her as rather indispensable to the gospel story. Well, with much perplexity about what to do with Mary, as McCulloch writes, a sullen Protestant silence fell on the subject. Well, sadly, Mary got caught in the theological crossfire of the Reformation controversies between Catholics and Protestants. And over the past 500 years, she's been the source of much disagreement. We know all the objections from the exaggerated and unhealthy forms of Marian devotion which grew up in the Middle Ages. She gets in the way of Christ. All oh, the statues to her are idolatrous. The images of her as a submissive girl are demeaning to women and a product of patriarchal stereotyping. That the miracles attested to her are phony and the visions of her are bogus. Banished for centuries, St. Mary has had a hard time stepping back on the stage in English Anglican circles, but she's made strides in recent decades, and in concert with a growing ecumenical consensus among Christians, Anglican thinkers have adopted a more nuanced attitude towards the figure of Mary. Well, if medieval devotions to her often trespassed on the worship of God alone, Protestant polemics often came close to denying that we could ever cooperate with God about anything or ever live a life pleasing to God, like Mary. Let me say, God never forces God's gifts on us. No. And we can become willing covenant partners with God only if we cooperate and assent. We have the capability. We have the agency as human beings to hear and respond, or to hear and turn away. We're not marionettes, we're not puppets, we're human beings like Mary. 
We have agency. Mary shows us that God chooses real people like us to work with and work through. Far from being the meek, passive woman of corrupt piety, Mary is a vital human figure, a model of faith in the limitless love of God. And thus, in the communion of saints, Mary is held in special honor as the one who freely accepts God's call to her to become the mother of the Messiah. The verse of the first hymn we sang makes this explicit. O oh, higher than the cherubim, more glorious than the seraphim, lead their praises, alleluia, thou bearer of the eternal word, most gracious, magnify the Lord. Magnify, it's not a word we use very often, is it? Magnify, it's what a magnifying glass does. It enlarges. This is what Mary does when she starts singing her revolutionary song of hope, the Magnificat. I once knew, had a friend who called their cat Magnificat. Her Magnificat draws attention to the greatness of God. It enlarges the glory of God. The God who brings down the mighty, the high and mighty from their seats and exalts and lifts up the humble and meek. Well, some have tried to make her a submissive woman. Isn't she really a subversive one? The proud, the mighty, puffed up, they must be resisted, she sings. And the poor, the weak, the downtrodden, the oppressed, they, all those who lie at the heart of God's compassion, they should be lifted up. Well, rather than a symbol of submission or separation, today especially, let us see Mary as a symbol and source of unity. Now, today's concern is no longer an uh, old dispute between Catholics and Protestant Christians. No, that day's over. The urgent global concern and issue of today is how Christians and Muslims can find common ground and live at peace. And here is where Mary can help. For she holds a place of high honor within Islam, and she is mentioned numerous times in the Quran. Go to any Marian shrine in the Middle East today and you will find it full of Muslims, especially women, invoking the help and guidance model of Mary. Well, several years ago, I traveled with some parishioners from Grace Church to Lebanon and there to meet Father Nadim Nassar, who is a Syrian, Arabic, speaking priest, who was to introduce us to the religious sites of Lebanon. I have to say, one wouldn't want to be going to Lebanon today as it's all collapsing, but a few years ago, it was safe to use Beirut as a base. I'll never forget visiting the great Maronite shrine high on the mountain overlooking Beirut and the Mediterranean. What struck me in this shrine entitled Our Lady of Lebanon was it was full of Muslims, families, children, couples, almost out at a day at the park, mixing and mingling happily with everyone there at this, and praying at this Christian shrine and how at ease everyone seemed to be together something you'd never really see in Northern Ireland, but which I saw in Lebanon. Mary, the mother of Jesus, uniting Arab Christians, Druze, Muslims in peace and harmony.
Even Paul McCartney thought she could be helpful. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before God now in prayer. You are invited to respond to the petition, Lord, in your mercy, with hear your prayer. Gracious God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving our sisters and brothers in Christ and your entire creation. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the Church, our community, and the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's Church throughout the world, that its bishops, clergy, and people may freely work higher to advance God's kingdom and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for people of faith throughout the world in this time of public health crisis, that in cooperation with one another and in solidarity with the suffering, we would work for the good of all and the protection of the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the leaders of all nations that they would be mindful of the diverse needs of the people they govern and serve, especially in areas affected by conflict, famine, and climate crisis, especially the people of Haiti, Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need of hope and healing, for Jennifer, Dolph, Arminia, Hans, Bob, Maria, Philip, Daisy, Beth, Douglas, Jean, Wendy, Irene, and the Armstrong family. That they would be comforted and strengthened, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who have died with the blessed Vir- that with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, they would share in the joys of eternal life, and that their families may be strengthened in times of grief and mourning. For Catherine, Yorick de Souza, Maurice Schaffner, Shirley. Donna, Vassal, Bill, Alex Philippoi, for those in whose memory the altar flowers are given, Harry and Bella Monroe, 
Morley P. Preston Karskallen, Charlton Ayres, Anne Jivoganwa, and Herbert Bakamito. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to the people of grace, wherever you may be. It's nice to see a good bunch back here in church, live, in person, real people. Uh, I want to take this opportunity just to uh, have a few announcements. First, to thank Lee for singing for us today, There's Stephen, who's playing the organ wonderfully today. Um, I want to uh, thank Chris Leonard, too, who's here Sunday by Sunday, who's putting this uh, technical production on the air, although he's off camera. I want to thank Chris on behalf of all of us uh, for what he's done, particularly in the last 16 months, keeping this virtual liturgy going online. Thank you, Chris, for your time and talents in that. I want to say I had a happy day yesterday because one of the daughters of our parish, Cicely Arthur, was married to her husband, Stuart, in Oxford, England, and we got to watch it all virtually online, and that was very, very wonderful and exciting. And uh, Cicely and Stuart are coming to Canada, I'm told, shortly, and it'd be wonderful to, uh, to see them and to congratulate them on their wedding. Um, this is a mar marvelous thing. You can be present in a church in Oxford, England and feel you're right there at the wedding. Wonderful. Um, let's hear from Chris Bunting, our church warden, just an update on our Narthex Courtyard project. Christopher Bunting. Thank you and good morning to everyone here in church and to and all to those two at home or cottage. It's a pleasure to give you a quick update on our Narthex Courtyard Renewal Project. Things are beginning to take shape. Concrete planters around the edges of the courtyard have been poured and are now in place. Have a look when you're leaving the church. The patio has also been graded. We can now see the very gradual slope to the north door of the Narthex. This will make the church fully accessible from the parking lot over off Thelma Avenue. We discover the brickwork around the courtyard is distressed after 100 years, no surprise. So cleaning will begin this week and repaired and pointed as necessary. The size of the opening for the north door of the narthex needs to be enlarged to accommodate a bigger new door and window. This work will be done before the stones are laid in the patio as it involves heavy machinery. We're expecting this phase to be started within the next couple of weeks. Construction of the trellis and the lovely lich gate are beginning off-site. 
I want to take a moment and say thank you to our construction team who is working very, very hard, and they are terrific to deal with. The response of our parish to this renewal has also been outstanding. Our heartfelt thanks to all the families and individuals who have given so generously to this project. If you haven't had a chance to participate yet, there's still lots of time to do so. Thank you also to our wonderful clergy and staff for their support and patience through this period. And a special thanks goes to my co-warden, Aaron Isles, who is overseeing the project, and to our fundraising chair, Andy Duncanson. We couldn't manage without them. Many thanks to all. Thank you, Christopher, for all you do. Well, it's with some sadness, of course, that I announced the death uh, last night of Catherine Colin Brander. Catherine is Mary Aza's daughter and the wife of Andre and uh, mother of children. So we extend our prayers, our condolences to the Colin Brander family at this time uh, after a long illness. So may she be received to the Lord. Also, I heard just from a very good source this morning that one of our most famous parishioners has died. The internationally acclaimed Canadian composer, the Dean of Canadian Composers, Murray Schaefer, at the age of 88. Murray Schaefer was a choir boy at Grace Church on the Hill in the 1940s. He got his musical education here and went on to be, as I say, the leading internationally renowned Canadian composer. People in Japan and China know about Murray Schaefer. He's that emblematically Canadian. So we give thanks for his remarkable creative life and witness. You know, a few years ago, he was here at Grace Church to watch a performance that we did of his oratorio, Jonah. Jonah and the Whale. And remember William Thomas, teenager, was Jonah. And uh, Murray Schaefer thought he did a wonderful job and it was a wonderful production. It was lovely to have him here with his brother who were choir boys here at Grace Church. So may he rest in peace. Well, speaking of music, let's listen to Lee sing the music of Franz Schubert as we prepare the offertory. Franz Schubert. <laughs>
God of mercy, receive all we offer you this day. May we share with the Virgin Mary the joys of your eternal kingdom and live with you in unending love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the mystery of his incarnation was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother. In him we have seen a new and radiant vision of your glory. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices and sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, 
and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed are those who trust in him. The gifts of God for the people of God. Franz Schubert.
God of grace, today we raise our voices to magnify your holy name, and in our generation to call her blessed who became the mother of our Savior Jesus Christ. May we who have shared this holy food continue with her in your glorious kingdom, founded and established in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask this in his name. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 